Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to the Columbus School of Chinese here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, today, I'm going to address a common point of confusion for students who are just getting into reading and writing Chinese characters for the first time. That being this concept of radicals. Now, you may have heard of radicals before. There's some really popular videos floating around online explaining how easy Chinese is to interpret once you know the radicals. Um, it's not quite as simple, and I'll get into that a little bit later. But first, the radicals are these graphical components that make up all Chinese characters. Some characters are just simply one radical standing by itself. Other characters are combinations of different ones of these radicals and graphical components all fit inside of a nice standardized uh, Chinese character sized box. So it's important to note that radicals were not invented first. So we didn't have these pieces parts like the alphabet that were invented and then we went on to form different characters, different words with them. That's it was actually the other way around. So uh, Chinese scholars throughout history were trying to find a system to organize these characters into lists and different things like dictionaries, and they came up with this radical system. The number of radicals kind of got whittled down over the years to now there's commonly recognized 200, a little over 200 radicals that you'll find in a dictionary that is organized by, by these radicals. So again, this system of radicals did not come first. The radicals were something that were designated as a tool to help organize characters that already existed. So why is that fact important for learning characters today? Well, that means that some resources out there are trying to make characters seem like they're easier than they really are are a little bit misleading. So some people will tell you, this right here is the tree radical, and this will always appear when their character has something to do with trees or wood or something like that. And unfortunately, it's just not true. A lot of times that tree radical will hint at the meaning, but it's often not the case. Uh, case in point, we have this word here meaning forest. We have three tree radicals all right next to each other. This next one means campus. It's part of the word xiao for school. So xiao, xiaoyuan, means campus. Now, you can kind of make a connection. Okay, well maybe on campus there's a building and uh, buildings used to be made out of wood. So that's why there's a wood radical here. If that helps you remember, that's fine. But uh, we're starting to get a little bit farther and farther away from a direct connection from our radical and what the character actually means. Another example, the two dot water radical or the ice radical, bing. Um, this shows up in lots of characters that have to do with coldness or ice. It also shows up in characters like jue, part of the word jue ding. Uh, to decide. If you looked up jue in a dictionary, uh, it mostly has nothing to do with water. It has to do with making a decision or something breaking, something like that. So while sometimes knowing what the radical is and what it can mean as a standalone character does help, does give you a hint, it's not always the case. And um, if you're trying to look for those connections every single time when you're learning a character's radical, um, it's, it's sometimes just simply not there. So that's a little introduction to radicals and uh, my word to the wise about uh, what they can mean for a character and what they sometimes don't mean for a character. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about when it comes to radicals. If you'd like to know more about them, uh, please let me know. I'd be happy to go farther into detail, and I'm sure there's many videos with the content on radicals, so uh, let me know.